I think uh, I think here is as good a place as any to stop for a second and talk about this rod. This is a very <laughs> very special rod, and it's got a I would say a layered history behind it. So this might be a longer-ish story. So I'm sorry if this is boring, but I think it's important. It's kind of a a little window into my past and then also to maybe my present I don't know but uh, yeah this is a rod that my grandpa gave me and my great grandpa's fly reel and I think before we actually jump into the story it's important to lay some background and <laughs> It might be evident through the way that I fish, but in my life, I run pretty hard. Uh, same thing with fishing. I'm very go, 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 and things, you know, be it uh, truck, computer cameras, fly rods, waders, uh, relationships, they're uh, easy come, easy go. I, In a lot of ways, I see things as tools to get me to where I want to go or to, to help me get what I want in a sense and so I try and remove the 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 sentimental value or the yeah just the the strange kind of secular uh, I, I don't know what the right word would be attachment maybe to things and in my younger years I had problems with this I would get way too attached to something and <laughs> took me a while to learn but Murphy's Law is a thing. What can go wrong will go wrong. And I can't, have, I can't tell you how many times I've been burnt or been hurt by, by losing something. And so as I've gotten older, as I've matured, I've tried to remove that feeling from most things. There is still, I would say, one thing that really kind of haunts me or really has, has me, yeah, <laughs> wrapped around its finger, gripped tight, and that would be this bamboo fly rod and the reel. Okay, so this story itself kind of all kind of all starts back in in high school for me. And it, it, at the time, I was really involved in school and sports and and future goals and aspirations and there was a, a always a, a I would say a decent amount of pressure from my parents and my peers to perform and do my best. And I really got into fly fishing around this same time in a, I don't know, almost in a strange way because it was a low pressure activity that I usually did by myself where it was, you know, if he didn't catch any, no big deal. If he caught a bunch, that's awesome. Like <laughs> it was this low pressure sort of activity that just I resonated with so much and at the time I thought it was pretty cool you know seeing all these people on this new platform called Instagram you know catching these cool fish and I wanted to be I wanted to be one of those so I got so into fly fishing and my parents my my buddies who didn't fish and, and girlfriends at the time I mean they heard all the stories they knew everything and they're like man shut up and so, going over to my grandparents' house after, you know, the weekend's adventure is done, um, it was always such a fun activity. I'd walk across the street because they lived next door and, you know, Costco cookies and maybe a beer or two if they were feeling, <laughs> if they were feeling frisky would be passed around and I would, yeah, just tell them about my adventures and the twinkle in their eye, the this, the, the questions and the longing for me to just keep explaining what I saw, it was this, I don't know, it was this strange validation that, that built up this love, this, this foundation for storytelling. And it was, one of my favorite things to do was to just go over there and spin yarn and just, just tell them my stories and, and each time I'd add a little bit more or be a little bit more descriptive or try and just just emote how how the day felt or what was 
you know, cool or tough or, you know. And so going through high school, going through college, this was always an activity. Whenever I would come home, I would, I'd be over there just, just telling, telling stories. And so fast forwarding a little bit, graduating college, University of Kansas, uh, rock chalk, shout out to my, my Jayhawks out there. And in, in my family, uh, it, it's, a, it's a big deal. Undergrad's a big deal. It's a milestone in a person's life. It's an accomplishment. It's four years worth of work put towards a goal. And, you know, I was, I was moving off to Idaho. There's, there's a lot of things that were happening. And when I, when I inevitably was able to come back from school, work was done, I, <laughs> I received a gift from, from my, my grandma and grandpa. And it was this, uh, this bamboo fly rod. And for those of you who are quite fishy folk out there, uh, bamboo fly rod is, I mean, the, the, it almost surpasses fly rod and, and goes to like piece of art or marvel of technology. It, it's so hard to explain, um, you know, something I personally never thought I would own. I mean, this, the, the, these kind of rods are very expensive and hard to come by and it's just, it's strange, but the reason they got me this rod was that my grandpa was was good friends with a, a fellow by the name of Oliver Floor. And my grandpa and Ollie both went to Notre Dame. My grandpa threw shot put, Ollie played football, and yeah, they remained friends after college and, and both kind of went their separate ways. And he was originally from Washington State and that's where you know he went back to, had a life, had a whole, you know, whole deal and, and ended up retiring and picked up the art of bamboo fly rod building, making, designing, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, my grandpa <laughs> kept kept Oliver well up to date on all his crazy grandson's adventures and recent obsessions in the world of fly fishing and so receiving a gift like this rod it's just it's second to none and and at the time i i should know my, my grandpa was really sick so getting to go to the assisted living home and and having him hand me this this silver tube with i mean quite possibly the nicest rod i've ever seen especially ever owned in it i mean words can't describe and it just you know, it's one of those things where where you feel like someone listened, you feel like someone cared, and a gift like this just, I mean, surpasses almost anything. And it's just, I don't know, man, it, it it's tough. And so he passed away maybe a couple months later, and I really have not gotten this out much. I try and get it out at least once a year just to... I don't know, almost honor um, the, the, those that are no longer here with us. And it just, I don't know, every time I get it out or, or move it around, I, I, it just reminds me of him so much. And it, it's crazy how much I miss him. And it's crazy how much I wish I could tell him these stories and how much I think he'd get a kick out of it. But going off of the rod, we got to talk about this reel. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a Shakespeare. This is a Shakespeare from the 19, I don't know, it's really old, really well maintained. And, you know, I don't believe in fate or destiny or I, I try not to think about it too much, but it's strange how it all kind of works sometimes because I received this reel at my grandmother's wake. She unfortunately passed away couple months ago I want to say and it having I guess I should say having both of those uh, individuals in my life pass away is hard it's tough um, but I digress we, we were at the wake and a relative from my grandpa's side an in-law from uh, families long forgotten was there and somehow by some miracle she had found 
a Instagram or Facebook page of mine and she saw that I like to fly fish and she brought this reel which actually was owned by my grandpa's father. So this reel is my great grandpa Leo's from way back in the day when he would fly fish and it somehow got put in a basement and never touched and the thing it, it, it sings. It, it runs as good as the day it was bought. And if you think I'm kidding, I mean, for almost a, a, a hundred year old rod to do that, that's crazy. And so I thought it would be right. I thought it'd be just to put the reel that my well, far off relative gave me that was my great grandpa's reel onto the rod that my grandpa gave me and so I don't know you know in a weird way it makes me think of those individuals that are now gone and it makes me appreciate everything they did for me and in a strange way I almost feel like I'm carrying them with me take him on these adventures showing them like all this cool stuff your grandson's gonna do <laughs> being a loser by himself in the mountains but, yeah, that is the story of the bamboo rod, my grandpa's rod and my grandpa's reel. And it, uh, yeah, it's hard to put into words. And, again, it's hard to get attached to things because things will always, always change. Everything is always changing, breaking, tearing, ripping, getting lost. And so... While this is in my hands, the, the, the grip is very tight, and I, I really hope I don't have to let this one go. But I really, really appreciate you folks sticking around listening to this story. It is kind of more personal. It is kind of more uh, sentimental in a way. It's good thing I got these sunglasses on because it's not the wind making me tear up. <laughs> something new whatever it was that held me back i'm sure it wasn't true holding on to long and unresolved questions hold you down what could have been a friendly smile has turned into a frown i'm moving on Well, howdy, partner. If you are seeing this, that means you've made it to the end of the video. And all I gotta say, as always, is thank you so much. And if this is the first time you're seeing this whole dog and pony show, make sure to subscribe. So you can see more stupid stuff like this, number one. But number two, to join the squad, man. And if you're digging all the fly season content, I've got three things for you. First and foremost, as always, the Instagram. I mean, come on, fishy pics, stories, the whole nine. Go check it out, always linked down below. Second is the Discord. Flippin' love the Discord. If you guys are sleeping on the Discord still, I don't know what, what in Sam Hell you're doing, but you need to get your act together and get over there quick. We're talking fishy picks, flies, adventures, various gear recommendations from all over the country. Oh, and by the way, the Fly of the Month contest. Every month, we pick a random set of individuals who put in some crispy, crispy flies, and we vote on them. And it's, oh my gosh, every month it gets better and better and better. And for this month, shout out to you. Holy cow, that is one dimey dime fly. You want to send some of those my way, please? Thank you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I need some flies. <laughs> but the last thing, and this is, more, uh, this is more exclusive, I would say, is the Patreon. The Patreon is for more exact fishy knowledge coming from this noggin right here so <laughs> take that with the greatest salt i suppose but for real it's the exact so we're talking like waypoints flies breaking down the stream every section that i fished in the seasons that i fished it 
really exact. So we're talking the Driftless, you know, the Ozarks here in New Mexico and even Colorado. I'm breaking it all down there and trying my best to upload at least two times a month or at least. <laughs> but that is all I got for you. The Aspens are on fire and that means the sun is setting in. Oof, late fall in the back country, that is trouble. So I need to scoop before it gets cold. So the last thing I gotta say is, folks, wherever you find yourself, be it in the back country or in your backyard, I sure hope you're keeping those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines.